the standard treatment hook cradle. It has two parts. What's up, everybody? I'm the hook, and I'm the blade, and together we're you know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the you know podcast, the show about all things you know. <laughs> I'm your host Lawson, and with me, as always, is my co-host Timothy. But I'm with you in a different way this time. But yeah, in, spiritually, because you've you've died. <laughs> I'm um, speaking from the dead. I'm actually <laughs> in the driver's seat of my car at the bottom of a lake. <laughs> it's a great intro to a movie. Just a podcast person recording in their car at the bottom of the lake. Actually, never mind. That's a terrible intro to a movie. <laughs> it's a bad idea. We shouldn't do that. It sounds like a bad version of Blowout. This is a very special episode, you guys. Very special, because... For the first time in Hookblade history, uh, in 10 years of doing this podcast, Tim and I are in the same room. The same room. Which is unique because usually we live a good 20 hours away from each other. Yeah. A few, different parts a few, of the country. A few states apart. Yeah. We have been pretty much online friends for like five years. Uh, we did get the chance to hang out in person a couple years ago in 2018, long before the, the hook blade was even a twinkle in either of our <laughs> our baby blue eyes. And uh, yeah, so we thought because we've been having a lot of fun doing the show, might be a good opportunity to hang out in person, hang out with some mutual friends of ours, meet up, watch a bunch of shitty movies. But but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about ranking the Assassin's Creed games. A couple notes at the top of the show. Um, first of all, because we we're doing this in the same room, Recording audio in, in, in person is an entirely different logistical challenge than uh, doing it remotely, and it's one we're not quite experts at. This is our first time doing it, so please forgive any audio weirdness compared to our previous episodes. Be patient with us. Or don't. It doesn't matter. Or, or write hate mail about how much the audio sucked. <laughs> we're, we're honestly okay with either. And then the other thing to note is that there isn't anything else to note. This is the only note we had. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through our rankings of the Assassin's Creed games because, you know, it seems like the thing to do. And I feel like if we talk about what our rankings are, you guys, our, our lovely, lovely listeners, will have a frame of reference for, like, what we value in the yeah, Assassin's Creed game. I mean, sure. if you've listened to more than one episode, you could probably take a good guess. Right. <laughs> we, did, we, we did a whole episode about what we value. <laughs> about what we appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know... Contextualizing it in a ranking, I feel like seems like a different thing. For sure, and it's 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 nice. You could put it in a you could put it in a bulleted list. Yeah, or like a, use asterisks or something. You could do that. A little uh, or or like or uh, there's a lot of drop down options in Microsoft Word for how you can organize a list. <laughs> <laughs> use hyphens. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna just sort of take it one at a time from the bottom to the top. Yes. Uh, and we'll just sort of each sort of discuss. What what is at each position on our list? Why don't we let's just jump into it? What do you think? Yeah, let's just so jump worst into worst to best, right? Yeah, worst to best coming in hot at number eleven. Anyone who knows me would know what I'm going to say here. <laughs> <laughs> Assassin's Creed three. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. It is not good. Yeah, it's definitely not like worse in the series. To yeah. Me. Well, actually, I'm kind of wrong when I say that. Kind of technically wrong. Yeah, because my my eleventh is Odyssey because I haven't played it, but yeah. I put it at the bottom just because I feel like spiritually I like Origins more. <laughs> but Odyssey is at the bottom for me. And yeah, I, famously I you haven't played Origins or Odyssey. That's what you're kind of known for. Yeah, is you've that's what I'm famous for. You've resisted the appeal of playing these fucking games and Rogue. Oh yeah, but that was between the console generation switch, and yeah. I didn't have my 360 anymore. Right, and I wasn't right. about to go buy a 360 just to play Rogue. Dude, so, why not? I missed I missed out on it. <laughs> I missed out on it. Uh, Rogue is uh yeah. Are all of the games you haven't played the bottom three of your list? Yes. Okay. And then above those bottom three, is it <laughs> sexy three? <laughs> so yeah, it is the worst in the series, I guess to me, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's I think that's a fair technicality. But I feel like if I had played Rogue or Origins, I would have liked it more than AC three, but I feel like oh, I, I think so too. But I feel like Odyssey would always be at the bottom. And that's I that I totally understand. I also understand why someone would put Odyssey below AC three 
on yeah. any level. But you like AC, you like, you still like, like, you think Origins is better than, well, I'm going to spoil your list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so bottom of the, the list for me is AC3. Bottom right. list for you is Odyssey. Yep. Next up. Number 10, right? I've got, uh, for mine, it's, uh, <laughs> It's Assassin's Creed Origins. <gasps> Ooh. Well, this is where our, this is where, this is where ours overlap. Mine's mine's Origins too at number ten. And I I hate to say this because I I haven't played it since it came out. I find it entirely plausible that if when I play it again, and I do intend to, I'm kind of going to go through all of them. I feel like I could end up liking it better than Odyssey just because, you know, Odyssey is full of grindy bullshit and dialogue choices and there's no assassins in it at all. Origins, there's also no assassins in it at all, but they sprinkle a couple assassins in at the very end just to tell you it's an Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. There are a lot of problems I have with the Origins story that the Odyssey story didn't really bother me as much. I thought it was a little better and I, I maybe had more fun playing Odyssey than Origins. Just maybe. Yeah, I don't like the world of of origins that much. I don't mm-hmm. like all the desert. I really don't. Well, that's the thing is is or, uh, and, that, and that's why I don't look at um, Ashraf as like the saving grace for AC, especially now. But I never yeah. looked at him as a saving grace for AC just because I feel like his game philosophy is 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 rather like very anti classic AC. Yeah. Because you look at Black Flag, and anyone who has a problem with Black Flag is really just because of the navigational uh, switch ups and yeah. how like. The, the focus is on the sea and more in, in, in the pirating than it is actual like classic assassin stuff. Right. And they, but they try and do some classic assassins. Well, we'll, we'll talk about Black Flag. We'll talk. We'll get, to, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to Black Flag. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, my number 10 is Origins. Your number 10 is Origins. Yep. My number nine is Odyssey, as I've kind of just explained. So right. I don't need to go into too much depth yeah. there. Nine for me is Rogue. Haven't played it. But I, I just feel like out of all those three, Rogue would still be the best one out of the three for me. I would, so. I, w- I would predict as much for you. And then now we're, we're fully into the territory of games we've actually played. Yes. My number eight is Assassin's Creed 1. Wow. I didn't expect it to be that low. Every time I replay it, I like it less. <laughs> So you should just stop replaying. <laughs> I'm Eventually, never, you're never gonna replaying like Odyssey it again. more than that. Yeah. I'm gonna boot it up. I'm gonna grab all the flags just to feel like a completionist, and I'm never gonna play it again. Because uh, there, while there's a lot to love about it, it's so bare bones. It's so bare bones. That's what a lot of people like about it too. And I get that. I totally get that. But as soon as AC2 introduces you to the power of modern storytelling, absolutely. Yes. But, but, <laughs> but also when it introduces you to like economy and things to do with said economy. Characters with inner and outer lives. All the things we've already talked about. We did a whole episode on Assassin's Creed 1. Yeah. Don't need to fully relitigate it, but it was it was higher on this list before I just yeah. replayed Assassin's Creed 1. Which is 1. fair. I mean, you, you, you this is a modern ranking for you. And I've really debated how it compares with what's next up on the list. Right. But what's 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 at your spot? My here? number eight is AC3. Right. Um, out of all the ones I've played, it's the worst. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, there are parts of, there are definitely things about it I like. Um, you and I are going on a big replay of the series right now. Yeah. So I am interested in getting back into it mm-hmm. because there are things about it that I'm like, oh, I remember that. That might be kind of cool to re-experience because it, it's not all bad. I don't think it's, it's all just bad. It's just 80% bad. <laughs> yeah. But like there, there's like morally gray Templars and stuff except for probably Lee. You know, he's yeah. not very morally gray. Yeah. But like in Haytham, Haytham's yeah. great. Haytham's great. So, And honestly, I played a little bit of AC3 before we started doing the show yeah. and I'm really not looking forward to jumping back into it. It's no. like the it's the game I'm least looking forward to yeah. replaying. At the list. moment, I was just finishing Revelations before I head up before I came up to see you. Yeah. So once I get back, I'm gonna plop down and finish Revelations up, and then get back into three. Yeah. And yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Spoilers for the next few episodes of the podcast. Yeah. We did say last week we we're gonna talk about Brotherhood this week. We weren't really able to make that happen. Uh, sorry to our, our guest, Jacers Habs018, um, because we are actually really stupid as far as recording infrastructure goes. And as far as figuring out a way to make it so that we could both hear him on a call, not hear each other, and both be using our own microphones and our own computers, uh, seemed like a really big pain in the butt. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Yeah, I mean, the obvious to solution would have been to just be in separate rooms. But then, but, but, the then, but then we're not in makeout distance. Then we're not in makeout distance. And then what was the point of all this? Why did you even bother coming up? Yeah, precisely. Yeah, because you can just assume as you're listening to the podcast that any moment that you can't hear either one of our voices, it's because we're we're making out. Exactly. And that's that's world building. <laughs> that's world building. 
All right, so yeah, I've got AC1, you've got AC3. Next up, I put Assassin's Creed Unity. And definitely deliberating between Unity and 1 was a really hard thing for so me So after AC3, you got Unity? No, AC1, I've got Unity. Oh, that's right, right, that's right, right. Okay, so for me, after AC3, I have Unity. All right, so we're matched up. We're, some, we're matched up there just after different games. Yeah, and the thing for me with Unity is that there's a lot to love. Same kind of situation as AC3 where... Uh, their ambition got the better of them on that game and introducing a new engine to the series didn't exactly pay off in terms of polish but for me like unity is a game the game i'm most likely to boot up out of the whole series when i just want a free roam i love paris i love the parkour system and even though i have a lot of really big problems with the story i feel like and this is something we'll get into if we ever talk about it on the show Unity is kind of a a bad story that's well told. Yeah, it's it, especially when you get into the swing of things with the Notre Dame assassination. Assassination. I feel like things um, are are very uh, they are they have they give you the illusion of a, of a well paced story. Yeah. After that, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's. It's, it's frustrating. Also, it's also a great moment in the story. It's in the, it's a Notre Dame situation. Yeah. It's frustrating that AC Unity isn't more polished and doesn't have a better story. It does still represent the apex of my hype for the series. Yeah, I, mean, I, I like, agree with you. I said in the very first episode that when it didn't work on my computer, I cried. Yeah. I cried real tears. Yeah, I was... I, I, I sometimes will just try and... You know, I'll try and inject some nostalgia into my veins. Yeah. And so I will go yeah. and rewatch old E3 press conferences. Mm-hmm. And I watched the Unity one. And I just remembered how much I was looking forward to it. And how it just seemed like it was going to be like the best game ever. I'll never forget unwrapping a brand new PlayStation 4 Christmas of 2014 with a copy of Assassin's Creed Unity and pumping that shit right into the disk drive and playing it. In my uh, in my basement in in Virginia, it was a great, you know, experience. And I didn't really like the cracks of the game. I I wasn't aware really or conscious of all of the game's flaws until after I was done playing it. Right. Like I was frustrated by the game design. Sure, there were missions I had trouble with, but I played all the missions, all the co op stuff, and I was loving it. And then then I kind of looked back on it later. And I was like, eh, that game was a bit shit. Something I will say about Unity that's very positive is 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 uh, most of the cutscenes yeah. are acted. And directed incredibly well. It's a very cinematic game. Like, if you go back and watch the story trailer, which you shouldn't have done it before you played, it's very spoilery. Yeah. But the story trailer, it still got me excited for a story that I already knew was bad. There's a lot of good parts about the the way it's presented, anyway. I also just still think that it's the... I I would say Unity is the best-looking game of all time. Yeah, I think so, too. I've never seen a video game more aesthetically pleasing. Last of Us 2 looks pretty good. But the art style, you know, like, yeah, like the art, yeah, the, they do a really good job of making drab, boring, post-apocalypse wastelands. But but Unity, man, it's like just this luxurious, it, it something to life upscale sure. French like Versailles, architecture. Versailles is beautiful. The insides, the lighting, the like it just it looks so real. I was so excited when it came out as to like, this is what next gen games are going to look like. And then a year later, Syndicate looks at least 50 percent today good. it doesn't look as good as unity no never did origins odyssey i don't think they look as good as unity no that thing that that game pushed some boundaries and for that even though ac1 the product the completed game is better i think as a as a as an experience the story the gameplay like ac1 is more effective at doing what it sets out to do by far AC Unity is just going to hold a special place in my, my heart despite all of its flaws. Me too. I mean, I looked, getting ready for this, I looked back at, uh, I made a tweet a little while ago about like ranking the top five for your, your favorite game series, and I ranked the top five, and Unity was my fifth. Yeah. I don't know where that ranking came <laughs> from. It must have been closer to when I played Unity again, and I, because, I, like, look. You have that Arno Dorian shirt that you love wearing all the time, every, every time you're in public. Yeah, I mean, I have it. I, I brought it with me just for that reason. Yeah. Um, to give context, I I was so excited for this game that I ha- I owned like two different Unity shirts. I owned yeah. the the UB Workshop official one, yeah, which I wore every day to high school. <laughs> I don't. I now I now see why no girls talk to me. Um, and then I had the Onodorian shirt, which was like a designed by humans yeah. art winner thing, yeah. and I had that. And I still have it today. Um, it's useless. Let's I, mix it up. What's what's on your list above Unity? 
above unity? Yeah. Syndicate. Brotherhood. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, I like Syndicate a lot more than you like Syndicate. I think that's fair to say. Very much. I also see why you would rank Syndicate and Unity pretty close on your list. Yeah, there's a, yeah. I mean, I honestly, like, if Syndicate didn't have a better story yeah. and <clears throat> more just enjoyable things to do in the game, I would say Unity's better. Yeah. But because Syndicate lobotomizes parkour and mm-hmm. all that. And what's interesting about comparing the fact that you've got Syndicate on your list, I've got Brotherhood, they're both written by by Jeffrey, Jeffrey O'Halem. O'Halem. So they've got the same writer. They're the only two that are written by him. Yeah, well he wrote he wrote yes, full games. He did write the uh the DLC Dead 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 Kings for Unity. Sure. He did write that. And what's interesting about comparing them is they're very similar in terms of their priorities where where it comes to storytelling. I don't want to go too deep on Brotherhood because we're doing that next week. Obviously, we'll have Jason sure. Hobbs opinion to add to it. But I found that, you know, I don't love the approach that both of these games take where you kind of have a mustache twirling cartoon bad guy and unequivocally good heroes who are just liberating their city from the bad guy without a lot of personal stakes mixed in. Here's, you know what's, what I mean? here's what's better, though, in Syndicate is... Crawford Sterrick gets his own little cutscenes every other sequence. Absolutely. And Chesare Borgia is like a nothing character until you fight him and he's still a nothing character. Yeah. Chesare Borgia. But we'll talk is about that with Brotherhood. Villain. But that's why I think Syndicate has the upper hand. Yeah. Because one, Crawford Sterrick's a better character. Yeah. And they to give I I to give him like his own little scenes. Uh even other, though in your ranking, Brotherhood's gonna come above Syndicate. Yeah. Yeah. Because I because I still think Brotherhood holds true to some of those classic AC stuff. Like like sure. But, We'll talk about We'll that. get there. For me, yeah, Brotherhood's at this spot on the list. I didn't love Brotherhood as much as I had hoped to. And, you know, we're going to f- we're gonna talk more about it all uh, all next week. So I won't go too deep. Right. What do you have above it? Uh, above that, I got Black Flag. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's so low. <laughs> that's where I put Rogue. <laughs> I have Rogue there. We're really about to match up Rogue versus Black Flag. <laughs> Uh, man uh, damn yeah I, I'm not as that jazzed hurts. about it as most people I get it I think you might like it better when you replay it which you're going to do I think so too it'd be interesting for us to revise these lists once we once we finish the the, the, the big replay I think we'll have to and I, my list has already changed quite a bit since we started the replay right my top three has been shaken up as, yeah as much. I mean like like you said there are definitely things about brotherhood that like I don't love yeah, and we'll definitely talk more in depth about it. So, like, Brotherhood could very well shift. It's just like I'm not going to put Brotherhood below Unity. You yeah. know, like I can't do that. Right, and it's not you know it's not below Unity. It's right above Unity on mine. <laughs> um, and then um, I've got above. Yeah, so yeah, so we're I'm talking about Rogue. You're talking about Black Flag. For me, Rogue it has all the same gameplay juice as Black Flag, and I really enjoy that style of gameplay. I love the naval. Love exploration. I love the islands. I love the way that the stealth works in those games. That's some of the pinnacle of stealth in the franchise, if you ask me. Rogue has a story that almost works really, really well. I, I will save my in-depth thoughts for when we talk about it on, on an episode. But yeah, I think my issues with Rogue are the same as everyone else's issues with Rogue that get talked about, where it's one of those stories where if your protagonist and your antagonist had had a 10 minute adult conversation, everything could have been resolved and all of the conflict could have been bypassed. And every single thing that happens in the story hinges on a fundamental misunderstanding that was totally avoidable by rational characters. That's just not really great writing in my opinion. hundred percent. There are some interesting things about Shay's voice actor too. That's related to to you (laughs) specifically. (laughs) Oh I don't know yeah, if you want to mention that? I've not. talked to Stephen Piovasan a couple of times to try and get him onto different podcasts I was working on because he was just kind of like, as far as voice actors go, he's a pretty low key guy. Right. He like will add you back on Facebook if you request him. Right. I sent him messages basically saying at the time when I was working on Animus Island podcast by our friend Aftermath One Two Three One, former head mod of the subreddit. Mm-hmm. I was just sort of helping out, kind of like as a producer, and I was doing like music stuff for them. I reached out to him. He was like, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd really like to be on. Let me talk to UBPR about it. And they ghosted me. Then later I was hosting my own podcast called The Bureau. Um, and I asked him again. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm working on a different podcast now. <laughs> Remember that last podcast? Forget that podcast. It doesn't exist anymore. 
why don't you come be on my podcast? <laughs> he was like, yeah, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry I ghosted you that time. Well, let's do it. I haven't even bothered reaching out to him about Hookblade. You can't fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Sh- sh- mostly shame on you, but sh- sh- shame on me a little bit. <laughs> you, wait, but you also requested to play Yahtzee with him, didn't you? Yeah. And he, he said no. <laughs> well, I was I started playing uh, Scrabble Go on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came up because he's friends with me on Facebook. Yeah. And I, I sent a request to play Scrabble Go with him. And he plays, like, I, I can still see, like, he last played today, last played today, the next day. So he didn't want to, he just <laughs> didn't want to play Scrabble with me either. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I like you, Steven. You seem like a, you seem like a good hey, guy. Hey, we gotta go three for three. And try and get him on this podcast. Oh, <laughs> you know, at this point, I'll request it just for the meme. We'll bring him on to the rogue episode, <laughs> just so I can say next week, yeah, I asked Steven again. <laughs> Third podcast in five years. We'll see what he says. Anyway, yeah, rogue. It's my number. Well, you. It's my number five on the list. So that's interesting that I haven't encountered about it which i thought was interesting that Austin was saying is that rogue has better navigation mechanics i felt like they the stuff that they improved with naval combat and navigation made it a little bit more engaging i felt like they got more out of their environments black flag you have these big open ocean rogue gives you two areas two maps that are separate you have like the river valley and like sort of an arctic area right it's not arctic it's like i don't remember i don't remember what they what they were it was snowy there was snowy, snowy map, <laughs> snowy map and rogue, whatever it's called. It was fun because the ice introduced a couple mechanics and the locales were really interesting. The river valley was really tight, sort of narrow corridors between mountains. So you had to kind of manage your speed and stuff like that a little bit yeah, more than you sure, had to yeah. in Black Flag. That sounds fun. It's a good game. Number four for me after Black Flag is going to be AC1. Yeah. Um, okay. On my replay, I definitely had some trouble with it. There are things I don't like about it. Yeah. Um, there are things I really don't like about it that upset me. However, the way the way it handles the modern day, the way it handles the confessional scenes, its vibe, its presentation, its atmosphere, uh, some of the way the cities look, uh, just I, I I can't put it too low on my list yeah. for those reasons. Because I think a lot of those things is what made the early games special, especially especially on this replay. I've been noticing how like just. What would have happened if Patrice didn't get booted, you know? Yeah. Like, I've, I've really been fantasized about what that would have looked like. Definitely. But who knows if it would have been better than what we, we have now. Right. Who knows? Yeah. But if Patrice gave us the one, and then also the best series, best game of series for the, the, the majority of the opinion, I'm just curious what his AC3 would have looked like. Definitely. Anyway. Definitely. That's legit. I, you know, <clears throat> it's funny. Yeah. You like AC1 a lot more than I do. That's totally legit. But I, I like it. I think I dislike it for the same reasons you dislike Definitely. it. Definitely. There's just, we have different priorities. Sure. You know? Yeah. Cause, cause I think, I think if a game came out with AC1's type of modern day, I mean, I'd be all over it. So. Definitely. Um, yeah. My, my contender in this spot is Syndicate. Syndicate is currently at number four. And like I said, I have a lot of, um, a lot of just personal enjoyment for for Syndicate. Just first of all, I have a twin sister. That plays a role. Jacob yeah. and Evie have their fun twin dynamic. And much like Jacob and Evie, my twin sister and I are pretty much the complete fucking opposites of each other in every way. <laughs> um, but we get along and you know, really well. Yeah. We're, we're best friends really. Me you and go sister. and you go and uh, you know, destroy a bank and she cleans yeah, up. I, I ruin the banking system of an entire country. And then she kills people and brings it back together. Yeah, it's our it's it's our dynamic. It's our relationship. It's very healthy dynamic. I love the the targets in Syndicate. I love the way that you know. There's so many memorable ones. Honestly, for me, more than in any other Assassin's Creed game, uh, even AC One, even some of the Ezio games. You know, I gotta say the thing about Syndicate that strikes me the most is it has like the best, some of the best, probably, if not the best, incorporation of lore. Yep. They use a lot of it and they take advantage of it. And we also, as we've said multiple times on the podcast, have a huge soft spot for Syndicate's modern day. It's a great yes, modern day. Yes, hundred percent. But also, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, in terms of it, like, it, I feel like Yohalem is one of those dudes that just like respects the lore. Definitely. And so he doesn't go out of his way to like make any bullshit. You know, like, like, and yeah. the thing too is Project Legacy, as I'm admittedly a big fan of. Yeah. They utilize a lot of the stuff that the Project Legacy built up about the Shroud yeah. and, and, and even expanded on it in, in the database sequences. So even though I recognized a lot of the stories that it was telling, yeah. they uh, fleshed them out a little bit more. Totally. Just totally awesome. 
And we, we love syndicates. Syndicates, my number four, but it was until this week, my number three. Right. Yeah. Now it's changed. What's your number? Three? My number three is Brotherhood. Wow. There are things about Brotherhood that I don't like, but I still think it it still has that like refined gameplay that AC One lacks. Yeah. And it still sticks to that classic AC feel that like a game like Black Flag doesn't have for me. So. Yeah, I I put my number three. My number three is Revelations. Revelations is pretty great. Yeah. For me, Revelations addresses pretty much all of the problems that I have with Brotherhood. But my problems with Brotherhood are severe enough that it keeps it out of my my higher part of the list. It's right. It's pretty much smack dab in the middle of, of the list for me. But um, because I don't, I didn't love Brotherhood story. Yeah. And for sure. I had a lot of problems with the mission design. I had a lot of problems with the systems, all of which we're going to explain more um, next week. Right. But Revelations for me pretty much uh, pretty much knocks my socks off, and I, I I really never got to fully appreciate it until this playthrough. Um, but the way the parkour, the design of the city, the stealth mechanics now that they kind of open up your bomb possibilities, um, and that Darby McDevitt writing man, yeah. it's just you can't beat it. You can't beat it. He knows how to write good characters. He knows how to take the the most small minor like interactions. And make them interesting and make people genuinely interesting. You know, yeah. you go back to to Brotherhood, you've got these like, or, or, or AC2, you've got these beat up missions. Somehow every single beat up mission is a, is a, is a wife telling you to beat up her, her, cheating, her husband. cheating husband. Yeah. You like, you put Darby McDevitt in that room on that day, and he's gonna come up with six very different reasons someone's yeah. asking you to beat someone up. Absolutely. And they'll all be interesting stories to themselves. I mean, this dude wrote, a game called The Sims busting out for Game Boy Advance. <laughs> and by most accounts, he did a really great job with that. And I don't know how you do a good job with that. So, look, Darby's a hero. He's a genius. Revelations is his, his first showing of that in, in Would Assassin's Creed. Would have been a mobile game. Would have been a 3DS game, yeah. Or, yeah, a, hand, a handheld game. Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was the right man for the job, and now he's he's showing us the light. He's showing us the way. He's single-handedly marketing Assassin's Creed Valhalla to actual fans of the series mm-hmm. uh, on Twitter every single day. So we love him. I love Revelations. That's my number three game. Now to, to the number two slot. Number two, ironically, is AC2. Number two for me, AC2. And there we go. I mean, it's yeah. some more overlap. Another, another little direct overlap. Yeah. There is plenty about AC2 to love, especially coming off of AC1. Uh, even though uh, we both are kind of on record about not liking the ending. Yeah, I as think, we talked about last week. Yeah, I think there's so much to enjoy about um, the world, how, how it's, brought, it's brought to life, the characters, yeah. you know, Ezio, his journey. Um, right, you know, I mean, this I, I love the, like, conspirator stuff. You gotta, like, go, like, work your way up the ladder of the conspiracy. Yeah. And, and you, you're growing with Ezio as you do it. And mm-hmm. um, just... Most things are more enjoyable in AC2, even though the combat is worse than AC1. But that's besides the point. Ezio, Ezio is a classic character. He's iconic. He's not a, a, like the best character of all time, mind you. But yeah. he, neither, he is one of the best assassins. Neither is time. AC2's version of him the best version of Ezio. Agreed. I, th- I find Revelations Ezio is the best. Absolutely. Uh, the right I love answer. the contrast between... Having him old and mature and, and wizened, uh, you know, kind of a little bit of boomer energy, oh, but yeah. still being a kick-ass assassin and and all of that, and carrying with him the stories and the memories of the things that have happened in the previous sure. games, just great stuff. And AC two, yeah, it really is the progenitor for the franchise that we know and love, at least the parts of it that we love, um, in a lot of instances. And you just can't beat AC two. It's the classic. Have it's you the, seen? It's the rock. You know, it's the it's the foundation upon which this franchise truly was built and also yeah yeah i mean ac1 is when the series started ac2 is when assassin's creed started yeah ac2 is when is when assassin's creed went from being a boy to a man yeah very true mm-hmm. i i uh, also brought us lineage yeah that great movie or short <laughs> you have a you, you have a fun fact about etsy in that movie lineage i do well the fun fact about Ezio and lineage <laughs> is that he's played by devin bostick <laughs> who is best known for playing Roderick in the original Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies. While everyone else looks exactly like their voice actor because all those characters were modeled after their voice actors, Ezio's just over there looking like fucking Roderick. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, it's me, Ezio. 
Uh, he has one line anyway. I don't even remember what he says. He's like, "Okay, father." I have I have also a fun fact about AC2's advertising in regards to the actors, um, because every every once in a while I remind myself that the AC2 story trailer, I believe, oh lord, they couldn't get Roger Craig Smith to voice Ezio, so they had the guy who plays his dad do it. So he narrates the trailer from Ezio's perspective in the voice of his dad. It's ridiculous. It's really weird. Some of the some of the shots of the game they use Ezio's real voice because they're just using dialogue from the game. But when they want to put in a line that doesn't actually exist in the game, they have his dad record it. So there's a moment where he's like, Leonardo da Vinci, <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci, I am your dad. <laughs> And he does it higher pitch, too. It's not just, I'm not doing that. That's not my impression of his dad. That's my impression of his dad's impression of Ezio. We'll have to, like, we'll have to, like, link that in the description. I didn't know this existed until you showed me recently. Leon- Leonardo da Vinci, I am in your debt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Now, drum roll please, those of you at home. <laughs> Number one games, to no one's surprise, because I'm sure we've mentioned them. And also, if you're uh, looking at the list, you can figure out <laughs> figure what's, out the, what's the one game they haven't talked about. <laughs> For me, it's Black Flag. Yeah, Black Flag is a beautiful, beautiful game. It has the best story in the series. Full stop. Edward is one of the best protagonists. The way they introduce and use the Assassin Templar conflict is ingenious. Even if it's not enough for, for you on the level of, you know, the older games. Now that we have Origins and Odyssey, I feel like it's really hard to to shame Black Flag too much for how it uses Assassins and Templars. Because we've seen it can be so much less than that. Yeah, but if you're thinking about it of, the, of, of, of its, its time, time, I understand. For sure. At the same time... It really tickles my pickle. I would I take, I would so take most of Black Flag over what we have right now. Absolutely. Yeah. There are some, you know, missions that kind of suck. Uh, some things that are that are that are frustrating. But all in all, it it did the best out of any of the Assassin's Creed games for me about creating like a role playing ish fantasy that I could really like sink my teeth into. Being this seafaring captain, enjoying the uh, the naval exploration, and also doing cool assassin shit on land. It's it's a game that I never expected that Assassin's Creed would give us, and I, I I hope that you know we get something as good as it again because it's my my favorite. More of that classic, incredible, detailed Darby writing where he just makes all those characters so real and memorable and believable, and uh, you just can't beat it. Pour me a hot cup of AC four any day of the week. That's what I'm so I'm drinking with my breakfast <laughs> some Assassin's Creed four. That's what I want. I'm, I'm interested to see if my opinion of AC4 changes soon. Um, I think it might change, but I don't think it'll change very much on my list just because it's 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 close to things that don't have a lot of wiggle room at the moment. Sure. But uh, my number one, which is obvious, I guess, is AC Revelations. Yeah. It's uh, I can't ever say it's the best in the series because I know that there are things about it that are probably not as good as like just a like because. You got to think about it. I mean, AC Two is regarded as one of the best games of all time. Yeah. So like, no one's no one's putting Revelations in that running. So while I can say objectively it's probably not the best AC, it's my favorite by far, and it has the most attractive qualities to it for me. And so I'm definitely looking for more of a, of a Revelations esque game. And like, I just think from everything from like the UI changes to uh, uh, an older, more mature Ezio, the Hook Blade. Revelations has, has, as of right now, my opinion is that Revelations has the best parkour in the it's series. It's got the souse. Yeah. Revelations has the souse. Yeah. It's really good. I, I totally get your love for Revelations, and I, and I love it too. And I'm really excited to talk about it in more depth Absolutely. on the podcast because I've got a lot to say about it. I know you've got a lot to say about it. For sure. But yeah. I really enjoyed replaying it because just like with Brotherhood, the first time and only time I played these games until these replays was uh, in a mad sprinting dash over one or two days to get to AC3. Yeah. Imagine, that's the most disappointing. Imagine that, yeah. That's the most disappointing uh, binge of all time. 
to just be really desperate to play Assassin's Creed 3, only yeah. to find out that Assassin's Creed 3 is Assassin's Creed 3. And while you're getting to Assassin's Creed, you're jumping through over like some of the best, better some games of the best in the series. I, yeah, and, and also just, you know, ignoring a lot of content that you don't really sink your teeth into when you're just trying to finish as quickly as Absolutely. possible. Absolutely. So. Like in Brotherhood, you can completely miss the, the Leonardo the machines. And, and that's exactly what I did. In Revelations, I missed all of the Desmond first player uh, parkour. Yeah. It was so that's first not a person. It was so it was so engaging to do those little first person puzzles. I loved it so much. I have yet to do. I I did one of them. So just to to kind of repeat it, go over it. You know, my ranking from top to bottom is AC four, AC two, AC Syndicate, Revelations. Rogue, Brotherhood, Unity, AC1, Odyssey, Origins, AC3. So for me, from best to worst, got AC Revelations, AC2, AC Brotherhood, 1, Black Flag, Syndicate, Unity, 3, and then the ones I haven't played, Rogue, Origins, and Odyssey. And I only, I put them that way because at least Origins doesn't like go so far back in time that they forget what assassins are. Kind of does though. Well, like, but there's still the hidden ones. Like, and I would I'll respect take that, that over if, that. They, if it was just a game about creating the hidden ones. But right. again, like as I say in my video, you know, you can't tell me this is a game about the formation of a brotherhood only to form the brotherhood in the post credits. Absolutely, scene. no, I agree with you. I agree with you. This game sure. is not about. But at the least origins. Bayek like looks like an assassin. He is wearing a hood, and he acts like an assassin. He has a hidden blade. That's true. Those are something. It's I guess. Something. I guess it's cool that there's a hidden blade in it. I guess I like that there's a hidden blade. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the honorary 12th ranking from yeah, both of us. The worst uh, game in the whole series, <laughs> uh, Assassin's Creed the movie. <laughs> We're thinking about doing like a little a little commentary track. I think that could be fun. I think that could be fun. I think we'll just record ourselves watching the movie and reacting to it. Yeah. And then you guys can stream into your earballs while the movie's playing. And we'll make a little I mean, highlight reel. The negative parts about that is we would be making them. Watch you would the then movie have again. to watch the movie another time. And you know, sorry, but I have a lot of thoughts about that movie. Yeah, we we're going to talk yeah. about that soon, and we might talk about it next, <laughs> right <laughs> now. We might talk about it now. <laughs> so you know, while we have very similar priorities and often agree quite a bit in these episodes, we talk about games. Our lists are pretty different. On they the are, whole, they are different. Yeah, They're pretty different. Because I think you can ignore certain things more than I can, and vice versa. Right, vice versa for sure. I mean, we 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 each have different priorities that we look for, for sure. and like, that's what makes us such great podcast hosts together. We're fine. We're all right. Yeah, yeah. We're okay. We get by. <laughs> Could be worse. Yeah. <laughs> We could be, uh, we could be d- 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 sitting here. Oh. Could you imagine that combo? Oh. You can cut this out, but yeah, could you imagine that combo? <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> I don't have to imagine it. I don't have to imagine what is anything, that like? brother. What is that like? Um, have you ever seen like a, have you ever seen like a three year old writing his name and shit on the walls of a bathroom <laughs> stall? <laughs> If I keep this in and I bleep out their names, I'll just tell you we're not talking about anyone in the Assassin's Creed community. <laughs> we're just talking about people that I know in real life. Yeah, people in your personal people life. People in my personal life that we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, now they're going to be you so know curious. know who you are. They're going to be so curious who it is. <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, we've really enjoyed doing this episode, our first episode of Makeout Distance. We're definitely excited to get that Brotherhood episode up with Jacer's Hobbs. Jacer's Hobbs, thank you for being patient with us Ooh, while we yeah. while we are stupid about technology. We're looking we're looking very much forward to that to get our episodes on our replay going and yeah. keep keep that keep that streak going. So. Yeah, tell us what you want to see uh, in the comments, what you want to hear us talk about. Send us some hate mail. Actually, you know what you guys should do is tell us your rankings. Drop your rankings in the comments. Yeah. Um, and tell us how you feel about ours. If you think we're complete dumbasses yeah. who don't know anything about Assassin's Creed, or if our ranking is exactly the same as yours because we're both you're smart and so are we. You know I'm, what I mean? I'm curious to see overlap yeah. between our list and theirs. Yeah. All right. I've been the like, bye. <laughs> we should probably record an outro, shouldn't we? Yeah. We didn't really do that. Um, as always, there are some ways that you can support us if you want to. Um, we love when people send us hate mail. We love when uh, you guys like our videos or dislike our videos or subscribe to our YouTube channel or hit the bell icon to be notified when we upload new content. We also love when you visit our Twitter. 
and you reply to our tweets, you heart them, you retweet them. Uh, and it makes us feel all warm and fuzzy. Print them on t-shirts. We just love that shit. Do that. We really do. Yeah. We have simple needs. We're only asking you to do like 12 things right now. Yeah, exactly. It's not It's not undoable. Make a Twitter. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter. Yeah, Wolf. Yeah, Make come a Twitter on. So we can get one yeah. extra like Get out of the Stone tweet. Age, lady. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So just interact with us and we will appreciate that. We yeah. might even or shout don't. you out. Or don't. You I might guess. notice most of our listeners that, that listen to us a lot and they comment... We we talk about we we give them shout outs yeah. we respond to them. So if you like hearing your own username, yeah, come out of people's voices. If you like hearing us say Jacers Hobbs zero one eight, I've been the hook. And I've been the blade. Yeah, that's how it's been. And we've been the hook. The hook blade podcast. Hook blade podcast. Called? Yeah, yeah, that's it, right? Hook blade. Hook blade podcast. Hook blade. Something like that. I uh, sure hope so. I got that. That's what I got tattooed on me. <laughs> Peace out, guys. So you can use one or the other.